Good morning, freedom seekers. Jeremy Chambers, Independence Acres Homestead. Coming to you this morning at 5.15 a.m. We are preparing for a trip to Tennessee, heading down to the Homesteaders of America hands-on workshop. Really excited, but we still have a lot to do to finish getting ready. First thing to do, we've got to get rabbits loaded up into the trailer. We've got to get up, get ready, and get out of here early. Like I said, it is about uh, 5, what time is it right now? 5.15, 5.20 right now. Anyway, and uh, we're only taking uh, about 10 rabbits with us for this particular trip. Um, and, well, there's a, there's a lot to do, even though we did a lot of packing yesterday. You know, one thing about being on a homestead is you still have to take care of of all of your morning chores. So Luke and Caleb are out here this morning getting all the bunnies fed. Hi guys, I know it's early and I've seen us this early. Hi buddy. Finish getting everything ready and for all the animals, get the greenhouse set up and uh, gonna get ourselves on the road. You're prepared. You got your work gloves on. Yeah, I want to get all scratched up this morning. So, normally in October, we're transporting a total of about 30 rabbits. Uh, one for the hands-on workshop, and the rest because we like to sell uh, some quality breeding stock. But uh, this time we're only taking uh, 11 rabbits uh, for the hands-on workshop. And uh, let's go and I'll show you exactly how we're gonna transport them. All right, Luke, let's grab it. I don't know if you guys can see or not, but sun's just starting to shine a little bit on the horizon. We don't normally get up this early, so this is a, this is a little bit of a, of a challenge here. But we've got it going because we're wanting to get on the road uh, by six or shortly thereafter so we don't get stuck uh, in a lot of traffic the nearest major city south of us and that's Detroit and uh, otherwise we've got about a nine and a half hour drive ahead of us so this is how we transport when we have a large amount of rabbits to take is uh, we use this thing here this is my RTT or rabbit transport trailer and basically what it is, it is a 1950s, 1960s boat trailer that I picked up for like a hundred bucks on Craigslist. And uh, we sanded down the frame, um, you know, painted it, put new wheels on it. I custom built this, uh, this box here. It is about six feet long, uh, about 30 inches high and four feet wide. And this allows us to put two of those cages in here and um we have put about at most about 36 rabbits in this trailer um but we're also taking all of our equipment uh and then up here we've got one of those uh turtle shell like car toppers and i built a frame there uh to hold that so we can pretty much load this thing down with everything we need for a vendor booth uh you know so we can have some more information about our homestead and then all of the rabbits and equipment that we need to take with us to conference. All right, guys, rabbits are loaded up. It wasn't the best idea. No, it's cold out. It's straight up 33 degrees out here this morning. Uh, they weren't giving us a, a fr uh, you know, a frost warning, but it frosted. So you're taking 11 rabbits, not 10. Oh yeah, well there's 11 there. Yeah, I don't need your jokes. Where do you want me to use the fire? Bring them here. Alright, dead bird. Alright. You call this 
cold. All right. Get the back side of the trailer all battened down. Um, we are gonna wait to actually finish tying down the front of the trailer here until we go because we don't want to give the rabbits as much air circulation as possible. Now, if you're concerned about the rabbits in the trailer, there are holes on the front side of the trailer here, and then that allows air to flow back up and then come out these back vents here. So plenty of circulation here, air circulation for the rabbits. So there's no concern there. All right, we've got just the last few, a few last minute items to get into the actual car here now. Um, we got to get, you know, book bags, cooler, a couple last minute loadings. Uh, still have some things to do around the homestead. Going to make sure that um, chicken and water, chicken, water and food's topped off. Yep. Double check that. I'm going to go ahead and even though it's kind of cold out, I'm going to go ahead and pop open the greenhouse because we are expecting temperatures to be near 60 today uh, up here in Michigan. So um, even though it is still a little chilly, we're gonna pop open the greenhouse so that things don't get too hot in here later on. Oops. Even though it got a little chilly here last night, everything's looking pretty good. Um, it's pushing right around 40 here in the greenhouse. So not great temperatures, but it was warm enough. You know, one of the th hardest things to do um, as a homesteader, small farmer, especially a large farmer, is uh, to be able to go away on vacation. And I know that sounds strange, but it is, it's so hard to, uh, to get away because, you know, we've got all these responsibilities. So it's really important that uh, if you're gonna start homesteading, that you come up with a plan now for what you're going to do when you're away from the property. And uh, for us, we came ac across a, uh, a friend's son. I guess when he first started this, he was actually a teenage son. Uh, Luke's getting some morning bunny, bunny love here. Hi, bunny. Hi, bunny. <laughs> so uh, one of our friends, uh, he was a teenager at the time, but he's no longer anymore. Uh, about five years ago, uh, four years ago when we, we're looking for somebody to take care of our animals and our property while we're gone. Um, he ended up being a great young man. Chase, we really appreciate you. And uh, so it, you really got to make sure that you've got a plan for if you're going to get away. Uh, because if you're like us, you know, animals have to be taken care of. All right. If, jo if Caleb needs any more help, Luke, would you help him, up, help him out with a few things? One hour later. It never fails. It always takes longer than you expect to get yourself ready to get out the door. So it's uh, just a little after six and now it is time to go. Oh. Time to hit the road. Time for a quick coffee break. Last chance. Last chance for uh, some Tim Hortons for a little while. So, heading into the gas station. Ooh. A little bit of a line. All right, Caleb's got our coffees. Time to get back on the road. I need some things here and then drive away. What? All right, time to get back on the road. Here's ready, got some breakfast, potty. Yep. Good. All good. All right. Smile, Shelly. She doesn't like mornings. <laughs> so we have a total of 
two states that we have to drive completely through to get to Tennessee from Michigan. So yeah, the first we have to go through is uh, Ohio, if you're not 100% familiar with the map of the United States. And uh, we are just about to enter into Ohio here in just a second. We're just, well, not a second. We're about eight tenths of a mile away. But it's always, you know, uh, a, uh, a good feeling to pass a state line when you're traveling because, you, you know, it's the easiest way to track your progress. Right, guys? Mm -hmm. Coffee's starting to kick in, so I'm feeling better. Oh, we're getting close to the Ohio line. Here we go. I'll turn you around. Three hours later. Well, we are 300 miles into the trip. We have just got out of some traffic in Cincinnati. The uh, boys are enjoying some video game time and Shelly's doing some studying for the upcoming homeschool year. I know, sounds strange, but you know, when you homeschool, you gotta plan ahead. And we're just getting ready to cross over the bridge here and get into the beautiful state of Kentucky. Oh yeah, Kentucky. We're not quite sure why the traffic's so bad. I'm guessing uh, construction, gotta love it. We leave the construction capital of the Midwest in Michigan to get stuck in construction in Ohio. Yay. Right, I don't know if you guys can see the river or not. See, it's a little, Brown. Little brown. It's not a tiny river. river. It's no! A tiny this river. is a big river, Luke. Hey, welcome to Kentucky! Thank you, Google. Alright, so we've made it to Kentucky and uh, next stop, Chick-fil-A. Because it's uh it's almost lunchtime. And uh Chick-fil-A is our um, location of choice for uh, meals when we travel. Um, while there have been a few Chick-fil-A's that have made their way into Michigan in the last two years, um, it still is a family tradition to have Chick-fil-A anytime we head south. So see you guys at Chick-fil-A. So we just finished up Chick-fil-A. I didn't take you guys inside because I figured you didn't want to watch us shoving our faces with chicken and fries. But uh, we make sure that the rabbits get plenty of water uh, during the trip. Uh, if we're taking a break, they're taking a break. So they're getting water, getting hydrated. Once we get to our final destination tonight, that's when they'll finally get uh, a full meal and, and water. Uh, also do a full, anytime we do a stop, we do a full check on the trailer, make sure the bearings aren't getting too hot and uh, make sure uh, tire is our stand well inflated. Time to be back on the road, get some gas and uh, four and a half hours until uh, Columbia, Tennessee. Many hours later. Well, we just topped off the tank because uh, we're not quite sure what the fuel situation is going to be like in Tennessee. Um, as most of you know, there has been some issues with the fuel supply in parts of Tennessee. So rather than risk it, we decided it was time to stop and fill up the tank and empty a couple other tanks while we're at it, if you catch my drift. Well, we are just about to cross over the Tennessee border and I've uh, had a beautiful day for travel. So it's really nice. Yeah, there's a sign and welcome, welcome to Tennessee. Tennessee. Welcome to Tennessee. Thanks, Caleb. You're welcome. Uh, so we are like about 90 miles away from the destination of Columbia, Tennessee. Getting really eager to get there. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's, we've had great weather though. I mean, uh, these are the kind of days where you don't mind being on the road so much, you know, sunny, clear, no rain, mid 70s. It's been good. Traffic's been decent for the most part. Hit a few hiccups with some uh, traffic here and there, but moving on along. All right. We'll uh, check in with you guys once we make it to Columbia, Tennessee. Well, we made it to Columbia, already have a little bit of our booth set up. We're going to finish it up tomorrow morning, but it is a beautiful property out here. Looking forward to exploring a little bit more tomorrow. 
signing off for today. Time to get to the hotel and get some dinner and get some sleep. So we're ready to go tomorrow morning. Right guys? Right. Oh yeah! yeah. Right! See you tomorrow. <laughs>